You've not won anything since a decade before the moon landing. I thought you were going to be positive. Are you messing? Jürgen's gone. And you're bringing in players for 40, 50 million pounds just because he's played for him three or four years ago. Right, you're the manager now. It's tough and make it work. Anyone who, in this room who sits and says they know what Chelsea's going to do this season is full of it. You can't finish second three years running. 50 million for him just seems like a lot of money. Ten hard gone by November. Jamie, well, the way you're just looking at me going, this guy's an idiot. Just to be the, the number nine for Man United. And everyone said we were going to bottle it, we were going to tail off at the end. How long will you have Eddie Howe before he becomes the England manager? He should have been a second, third or fourth striker. If you said to me we're going to take four points from six from City, four points from six from Liverpool, I'd be punching the air. Now, if you win that game, Arsenal win the league, all of a sudden you're killing Manchester City, you're killing your main rival. They're gone when you come to them big games, when you need to win, that's what you've got to do. Hello everyone and welcome back to the fan debate on Skybet. I'm sure we're all really excited that the new season has started and Scholesy on the back of the Euros going so well for England, almost won the trophy. I mean, do you think that feel-good factor will sort of carry on into the new Premier League season? Yeah, I think so. I think when there is a, a summer competition, it does tend to take a little bit of time to get everybody back. You, you'll see now even pre-season games that teams aren't at full strength yet and there's only, what, 10 days to go. So I think it'll take a bit of time, but I think the excitement's there. I think we know the quality in that top seven or eight teams is there and I think it'll be, it'll be good again to watch. If you fancy for the title? It is very hard to look away from Man City. As difficult as it is for me to say that, can Arsenal get even that, just a little bit closer? Obviously, they, they, they ran them close. I don't think Liverpool will be out of it. I'm just going to go for Arsenal just to upset, upset it for now. Upset it or upset Big Steve? Upset Big Steve. Big Steve, Steve the big sorry. one City fan. You've upset me enough in sorry, this Steve. time. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on, Steve, tell us Man Manchester City, what are you thinking? Four in a row. That was unprecedented. Do you think you can go for the fifth? Why not? Why not? Um, yeah, we're looking OK. Uh, last year, after the treble season, I think everyone was expecting a, a big drop-off. We didn't quite do it in Europe, but we managed to get it over the line in the league. Um, I think there's a couple of problems we need to address. I think Rodri, if he's missing, is a big, big issue. I don't think um, we have anybody that can step in and we seem to be a totally different team when he's not there. Um, I think he has to address that. But he's freshened it up a little bit with Savinio and um, Haaland's had a full pre-season. He didn't go to the Euros and we look OK. And it's just, it's just Pep Guardiola. He's the difference for me. You know what I mean? How he gets to motivate the, the, the team every season without a drop-off. I, I don't know how he does it. I mean, um, Scholesy under Sir Alex, they were the same. You know what I mean? You'd think, oh, they're going to drop off this season and then they'd go again. Um, but Arsenal, you know, they ran us close, but... I feel like they need a striker. Do, do, do you think it's only Arsenal? Scholes, you mentioned Arsenal as well. Uh, you, because in the past, it's always been Liverpool and Manchester City going for the title. Do, do you it, see Arsenal now as the biggest biggest challenge? I do, yeah. I mean, with Liverpool at the minute, with the new manager, it's 50-50. It's I don't think anybody knows what to expect. The players are good enough. But I feel like Jurgen Klopp had that little bit of something where he could get that little bit extra out. And I'm just wondering whether this new guy has got that. So, with Liverpool, they, it could be, you know, they could drop off or they could be right in the mix, but... You, you mentioned Haaland there. The mm. fact that Alvarez has just gone now for yeah. big money, do you think you need to replace him? I mean, because he was, he was always going to be a backup striker, wasn't he, because you've got Erling Haaland. And I always thought it would be a problem once he'd won the World Cup. It's hard to keep a striker who's won the World Cup on the bench so often. How do you feel about that? I think City fans are relaxed. I mean, the money we got for him is really good money for him for what we paid. Um, but... the the issue was last season when Haaland was out of the team, he didn't really come in and, 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 and stake a claim for Haaland's spot. I feel like City was always trying to shoe on him in different positions to sort of make him feel part of the team. And sometimes we suffered from that. I feel like with Alvarez in the team, we were a little bit light in the middle um, because he, it, sometimes he was, he, he was playing right up top. Sometimes he was dropping deep. He was getting in the way of like the creative midfielders and that. But... I'd like to see us go and get someone, somebody different, you know, a different option up front. Like if Haaland's out as a number nine, somebody that, that can play that number nine role. Scholes, I mean, I, when I think about Manchester City, I mean, people talk about the finances, how dominant they are, but I think Pep's, for me, the, the biggest sort of thing of why they've been so successful. Yeah. I mean, do you think we've almost all got a way for Pep to, to leave? I mean, yeah. How long do you think he will stay? Um, I can't wait for him to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think it, it just makes a difference. As, as you mentioned about Sir Alex before, it, it's always about once you win, then I'd say a week or two weeks, you think about it, great, brilliant, celebrate it. Then all of a sudden you're on to next year. And I think you see with Papa's, he doesn't mess about. You know, you saw the thing with Grealish last year. Once he started pissing about a little bit, I'm going to have to swear on there, though. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> it's not really swearing, that, is it? You're not, he doesn't take <laughs> shit from any player. Do you know what I mean, I, and I think Grealish did step off it, didn't he? Uh, at some point last year, probably start the start of the year, and it, it doesn't allow that to happen. The thing with Alvarez, he scored some important goals for his dinner. Now, you can't deny what they're buying for 14 million, yeah. he's going for 81. That's just in, incredible business. You can't say no to that. And I, I don't think Pep would be too bothered. I don't even think he'd be too bothered if he doesn't have a, another proper number nine instead of Haaland. He doesn't care. Mm. He just, he'll, he'll bring another brilliant footballer into it because he's got the Foldens, he's got the Bernardo Silvers. He's got everything that he wants. He's, he's just not bothered about a centre forward. Mm. Um, I think at times, even playing Haaland at times pissed him off a little bit because mm. I don't think he always wants that type of play. And, if Alan's misses through a few games, it, it, it won't bother him at all. So, look, they're, they're going to be the team to beat, but Arsenal, I think, will be closest. I, I think Liverpool are all right. I, I don't think Liverpool are far off. OK, the manager's a, a little bit... Uh, well, he is different, of, uh, of course, he's from Jurgen Klopp. And they were up there for quite a bit last year, Jamie. They, they just fell away the, the last few games. And I'd say a holding midfield player away from being a really good team and possibly a centre-back. All right, well, let's go to Liverpool. Abby, what are your thoughts on... We know how you feel about Klopp going, but Klopp coming in. The pre-season's gone quite well, but no, are we the only team now in the yeah, Premier League not to sign a, yeah. a player? We're not spending any money at all, and we just were crying out for a DM so badly. Even in the pre-season, you can see the way, at times, Arne just didn't use Endo. He's using, like, Sabozlai in that position. But what you can see throughout the games, like against United, which we won 3 0, by the way. <laughs> and, um, yeah, <laughs> you can just see he's just crying out for a DM desperately. We definitely need one 100%. And, uh, like, you look to the players that we didn't replace who've left on contracts that have run out, like Matip. And I know he gets injured at centre back, but you've got to sort of replace him with some sort of backup. Quant is great, fine, still a young lad. Contracts coming to the end, like Sir Van Dyke, and then you've got Trent's contract coming into the last year. And more as well, you know, so it's just... I thought you were going to be positive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you messing? Jürgen's gone. Have you got scores? Have got... Sorry, scores. You're talking about a, a defensive midfield player yeah. and Liverpool haven't got Rodri. They haven't probably got a Declan Rice. Paul, you played that role as well for United towards the end of your career as well. Yeah. I mean, how important is that player in any team, but especially for a team trying to win a title? Yeah, I, I think... It, I would say it's a big role, wouldn't I? Of course it was. Um... But I think Liverpool, in that area of the pitch, you've got some really good players. Mm. I, I, I could probably name four or five when you think of Ar Viella, there's Curtis Jones, there's Sir Bosley, there's Graven Birch who scored, who scored against United, McAllister, we've not even spoke about. I think it's important they have someone solid, that solid base now, in an ideal world, we'd all love to have Rodri. Rodri's the best, best in the world at doing it. I think there were, were actually players you could have gone for. You think of the lad at... At Fulham, he went to Bayern Munich, Paulinho. Paulinho yeah. I, I thought he was brilliant in the World Cup. I thought he was one that could have possibly gone to Liverpool just to sort everything out in, the, in that middle of the pitch and you know, make that spine strong, let the rest of the players play. But when you think of Dutch coaches, you think of total football, don't you? And you wonder whether he'll try, and, as you yeah. say, he tries to Bozzle in there. He might try McAllister in there. Now, they, they are good players. When you talk about protecting a, top, a, a, a back four or two centre halves, they're not quite in that league. But as I say, you're not going to get anybody the, in that league. I, I think the interesting thing was when you look at an a slot player, it looks a little bit more technical. Obviously, yeah. you say a Dutch coach than, than Jurgen Klopp. And you think of what Jurgen did in that position, he brought Fabinho in. I'm not sure an a slot's going to bring that type of football. I think he's looking for someone who can actually get on the ball and, and play. And I've thought, well, actually, McAllister did that role for Liverpool yeah. a lot last season, but Liverpool definitely lack legs and energy in midfield. If you think of how they finished last season, it was McAllister, Endo and Harvey Elliott as the midfield three. All got great strengths, but none of them can run. Mm -hmm. and, I, and when I look at that position, I say it's a fear, I don't know if Liverpool will bring anybody in, but if they do and it's a, a total footballer, will he be too similar 
to McAllister and what they sort of used in that position last season. And you, you sort of lack that physical presence, that energy, as, as Scholes has said, there to actually protect the back four. Yeah, no, you are spot on. I think it, we just have to see how the start of the season goes. I feel that like you can't take too much from the pre-season, to be honest, in his style of play, because he's still got the likes of Trent to play. Well, I'm dead excited to see how he's going to use him as long as Madrid go away <laughs> till the end of the se to the end of the. Um, the transfer window so it's just sort of seeing how the beginning of the season goes I'm not betting on us going for the title I don't think we're going to be in those three I'd be happy this season with a top four finish and a few good cut runs that that's fine so new you, manager you'd be happy in. with what happened last season happening this season and yeah when the new managers come in listen the start of last season with Jürgen you felt like everything everything was stable it, do, it doesn't matter if all the players went you've got Jürgen but we don't we don't know about this fella he seems fine but as a Liverpool fan I know all the other clubs are sort of used to switching and changing managers but Jürgen's been our manager since I was 14 so I'm feeling <laughs> unsteady by it even listening to Arnie's press conferences and he's not coming out with like that line like he hasn't got the I'm, I'm the normal one line or that in five years we're going to have one time I was watching his press conference waiting for that sort of like inspiring sort of moment and we haven't had that and listen you look at Shankly and Paisley different personalities still manage to be great but I'm just taking it quite late. You've got to accept that I mean you're not going to get another year no. Klopp but what I would say about Jürgen Klopp in, in terms of you, you could buy into everything he said you know the way he was I think even other supporters not everybody but most supporters you could you sort of you like listening to him didn't you and speaking I was the same with Alex Ferguson even when I was Rivals with them, you, you, they had that gravitas when they spoke. Mourinho, I think Klopp had that. The new manager may not have that, so we can't use that as a criticism against him. He, he's not Jurgen Klopp, but we'll, we've got also got to remember that Liverpool is Liverpool didn't win everything with Jurgen Klopp. You, you know, there was we come second a lot, yeah, which was probably doing really well at times because Man City was so good, but we wasn't like we won everything. So there's definitely areas we can improve and, and be more successful and maybe win more trophies. So I think we've got to try and take the positives. I know, I am <laughs> trying to take the positives, but it's difficult. It's all new for me and it's not just Jürgen that's gone either. It's a lot of his backroom staff as yeah. well. And Jones is coming out and saying like the training's dead intense and like they're all struggling with it, they but all say that it at the same man, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, well, I'm not used to that, am I, at the minute? So I'm just getting used to that. But yeah, it's... It, I'm excited. I am excited you at the same it, yeah, time. You sound it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Someone missing Jürgen so much. Yeah. I think, Clive, you, you think this is the season for Arsenal, don't you? Why are you trying to read my mind again? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't finish second three years running. Uh, it it has to be this here season. We go. Um, I, I'm excited because um, I'm enjoying what we're doing. Um, but you know, we're not playing against a dog and duck, are we? We've got Man City and, so, um, and Liverpool. and. I mean, we were talking earlier, weren't we, that what Liverpool pre-season, some of the things they're doing are quite good. You know, they are playing more, the pitch is smaller, so maybe the running ability may not be so required, right? They need a player like him at the base of the team, and they can get away with that, right? So I think that's what they need. As for Arsenal, I think if you look at us from 30,000 feet, you look at our left-hand side of our team, and you'd say we're a bit vulnerable on that side of the pitch, defensively maybe. And our build up on that side needs to improve. So, and so the right hand side, everyone knows about it. And by me, it was a game that really told us that we've got a weakness because they stood on that side, the right hand side, and they tripled up on there and we're out of the Champions League. And so how we build from that, I think it's really important. I was just looking at some numbers this week and looking at how we play. Obviously, I'm, I'm loving what we're doing, but we've got to get five more points to beat this lot, right? We have to, right? So how are we going to get that? And how are we going to guarantee that? A number of our first goals came from set pieces last year. Can we guarantee that? Could that number improve? People are going to be looking at us now. And so we've got to think about how we can be efficient in the box. Um, people say buy a striker. For me, it's about efficiency. That comes from a number of ways. A number of focusing on finishing properly, you know, and really taking care to own the story of a game. If we do that, I think we'll be in a better place. You, you think they'll win the league? Is that just because you think it's, it, it's due... A different team, City can't win it five times, or is it about yeah. Arsenal actually having that quality to actually take over Man City? Uh, I think it's a little bit of wishful, more wishful yeah. thinking than anything, because City are still the best team, don't get me wrong. But Arsenal are, are clearly not far away. I think the thing they're missing is that little bit of mentality where they can actually go on and do it. I think last year, sometimes when you're rivals, when you're going for the league with another team, as we went with Liverpool, as times ago with City, times with Arsenal, you have to go to their ground and win mm. in a big game. Now, I, I remember watching the game at the end of last season, uh, 
I don't know how many games were left when it when it was, but City was struggling a little bit. And Arsenal went there and played for a draw, really. And they were delighted with the draw. Now, if you win that game, Arsenal win the league. I, I had no doubt about that. I, I can't remember how many games left after Eight it. games to go to one. Is there eight games to go after it? Yeah. And that momentum is massive. All of a sudden, you're killing Manchester City. You're killing your main rival. They're gone. Mm. It's like a dagger to the, to, to the back, honestly. It absolutely destroys you. And then all of a sudden your confidence is coming and it's coming and it's coming. And you end up winning every game and you should win the league. And when I saw the celebrations after that game from Arteta and the players... Don't thought, mention oh. celebrations were Arsenal. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Celebrations. I've, I've yeah, about celebra- that <laughs> <laughs> But they, they were so happy to draw the game. Yeah. And I thought that, that that's wrong because if you go there and win at such a vulnerable time for Man City... I think There's the difference between winning the league and not winning the league. Do you think it'd be different this season if, if you went there in a similar situation? I think, can I just count that a little bit? I think at the start of the season, if you said to me we're going to take four points from six from City, four points from six from Liverpool, I'd, I'd be punching the air, right? But the bar's changed, right? It keeps going up and up and up. And I do think there's a, it's something what you said is, is correct. It's time to go to Anfield and win, and it's time to go to City and win. But it's like you've got to know the course. And we know the course now, we know what it feels like. You know, we were a surprise two years ago. We were there for real last year, but now we know the course, we know the requirements. And I think I, that's the key thing. So I think the four points the other way around mm. would have been better. So yeah. if you get your point, you draw early in the season. I tell you, once it comes to the end of yeah, the yeah, season, yeah. when you get into April, March, with yeah, yeah. March, April, yeah. them, them games against the rivals, it, it's so big, honestly. You, you, Destroy you. That's what. That's when you win the league. And I just felt with the cele- <laughs> celebration <laughs> when Arteta was smiling after the game, come on the pitch, and, and I, I really like Arteta. I think he's done a, a great job. But I just think that shift in mentality when you come to them big games, when you need to win, that's what you've got to do. I, I think a, a lot of people I've spoke to are mentioning Arsenal that you think it's just that one step, and I get it because I think for a lot of last season, I was watching them with the ball, without the ball, almost looked like the best team. You know, it was so difficult to score against them. The thing I worry with Arsenal is, you've just mentioned how many goals they got from set pieces, and then can you do that again? Yeah. I think how many, your injuries, to your, your, we all know what Arsenal's first 11 was, roughly. You, you, that, that. I think nine out of the, the first 11 played like 35, 36 league games. That's tough to do again. And what I would say in the last two years, you've, you've very rarely gone far in a cup competition. You know, the domestic cups, you've gone out quite early. And that, that always helps a little bit. Yeah. I mean, are we at that stage, I feel, Arsenal are now, where, yeah, you want to win the league, but you've got to win something. You've got to be, like, going to the, you know, even in Europe, going fair to get into an FA Cup. You might win it, but your team's too good not to go another season without winning a trophy. I, I totally agree with you. I think the expectation is we, we should win something. But to win multiple, be in multiple competitions and do well, you need a depth of squad. And if you're honest, the first 13 or 14 was, was good. But then yeah, but he never to... plays the other ones, does he? Uh, are, they, are, are we saying they're not good because we don't we don't actually see them play? Uh, well, we have to same, ask ourselves. The same players play every game. Well, because the, the first team has really gone to a place where the gap between the squad players and the, the key players has just grown. It's not it's not a failure in football. You just reach a level, right? And if you don't play regularly, your level drops, right? So I feel that gap got too big. And when it comes down to it, to go to City, you can't go there with hope. You've got to go there with your best team. And he kept playing it, kept playing it. And he got us to 90, you know, he got us to 89 points, right? And 91 goals, the most we've ever scored in our history. So something is going in the right direction. We just need to do the final bits that you're alluding to. to Sc- Scorsi, right. do you think the, I think the still lack a world class, not so much a striker, a tacker. When, when I see sort of Arsenal look at Saka out of that front three, he's brilliant. But then when I look at City and I think Haaland, De Bruyne, Foden. I mean, I'd put Odegaard in that. I just, I just look at the centre four position and the wide left, and I just think it could do with someone who I don't know. But you know, yeah. Do you have the feeling? Do you think they've got enough in the in their attack, like world class? Yeah. It, 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 do you know what? It's hard to to say they've not got enough because the amount of goals they scored, it, it mm. was ridiculous. And you say yeah. set pieces was a, was, a, was a big advantage to them. I think signing a centre forward w- would help it. Definitely, I think signing a an out and out number nine who will guarantee you 25, 30 goals as, as Man City have, then yeah, I think I think it, well, I'm pretty sure it, it would help. It's just that are them people out there now? Ivan Tony is probably the one who's been mentioned a lot. 
what is he, 28 years of age, I think. I think in Arsenal's team, he could score you 25 goals. I think in a lot of teams, he could score you 25 goals. I think it's where you look at Liverpool's front three or four, would you probably swap them for your front three or four? You think of the quality that's in there with, with Salah and Nunes, not, not so much. He, Darwin mm. Nunes struggled a little well, bit. Liverpool have probably Diaz. got five attackers who think they should play in that yep. front three in terms of numbers. I mean, I listen, we've, we've, gone, we've, got, we've, we've mentioned the, what we would call, say, the top three from last season in terms of trying to win the title. Hands up. Who, who, thinks, who thinks Arsenal... I think a lot of people would maybe think Man City, but... Who actually thinks Arsenal can stop Man City this season? <laughs> so the two Arsenal fans. <laughs> so most people, yeah, we all still believe that Man City will win the title. Yeah. Yeah. I, hope like so. if I think it's a good point about, about <laughs> I think it's making the squad stronger, isn't it? Mm. You, you, I try to, I don't like going back to when we won the leagues, but there was time to rest players when you, when you can trust them again, you can trust six or seven changes to come and play against the weaker teams and you, you still beat them and still beat them quite yeah. convincingly. Arsenal haven't just, they haven't got that luxury, have they? Yeah, yeah. But we're building it. We're building it slowly. You're getting yeah, there. slowly, yeah, yeah. We're building it slowly. All right, the team, who, 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 we must say, it was a bit of a shock going into the top four last season. Yep. Aston Villa, you've had a grin on Does your face since the show started. Missing. What yeah, are you I'm thinking? Do you think it's a flash in the pan? Because we've seen teams in the past get into the top four. <coughs> and then you know, Newcastle last season, we've seen sort of... Did Leicester do it a few? No, Leicester didn't do it. I'm just trying to think of teams who, who got in the top four. Everton done it probably 20 years ago, but they just get in there. Do you believe you can stay there? I think that's the objective now, is to, to, to stay there and, and try and remain there. I think Newcastle you know, found that difficult last season as well. But Emery's come in first season, seventh, second season, fourth. We've got a real stacked out squad of good players. And I think that's just the aim to try and mix it and, and remain there. I think if I, if I actually had to answer and say what would be a good season, I think qualifying for Europe again. I think we want to be a team that's consecutively playing in Europe. I think that's really important for Emery. But, you know, just to try and compete and grow. And I think, you know, a lot of people wouldn't have expected us to qualify for the Champions League last season. I think we had a lot of injuries that... I don't think a lot of people talk about Mings, Buendia, Ramsey, Kamara. And we've got those players coming back now as well. So our squad is better than last year. And I think a couple more signings, we should be able to remain and hopefully stay where we are. What, what do you think about the signings, Luke, in terms of Anana and, and Matson? They, they're the ones that yeah. sort of stand out that you think may go into I think the first 11. Those are the two big ones. I think our left back is a actively acts as a winger. So I think he was. Champions League left back of the tournament so he's got that sort of experience playing in the Champions League. Onana, I've always felt like he's a player that he's more than just a sitter. I think Emery can develop him and try and get him pushing a little bit further forward. I think with Kamara being injured until about November he's probably going to play a little bit deeper for us. So I think with those two players it's good. I think we've, you know, we've lost Douglas Louise, which is a blow and we, I don't think we could have done anything about it. We had PSR issues and I think if we had to lose somebody, I think he's the one that we would have probably have said, yeah, we'd rather lose him than Watkins or Pau Torres. Um, so I think he's the one that sort of made way, made way. And we've lost the RB to Saudi, who I think, for me, needs replacing. I think we need to replace the RB because... His output was really good for us last season and we, we need a different option up top as well. Scholes, I mean, is Aston Villa an example of what a manager can do to a football club? Because you think of where they were a couple of years ago. Yeah, they were in a bad place. Oh, it wasn't that bad, but still in the Premier League, I suppose. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but the manager coming in, Emery, he's got great experience. and Not so much at the bigger clubs, but it seems to be them... I don't know how I want to... No, just below I want to be the elite. Just below the elite, yeah. yeah. I wanted to be respectful towards Aston Villa because Aston Villa are a great like club. Valencia, like Sevilla. Valencia, Sevilla. Yeah. That's, what I was, that's what I was going to say. He's been very successful with them, them type of type of club. So you have to trust him. I think the big worry for Villa, again, will be squad size. Because you, th you think of like Newcastle last year, we talk about play teams having to play the same team. They went through a spell. I think they played... Horrific injuries. Or anything. Oh, horrific injuries. The, the same 10, 11 players were playing every single week and they were just shot to pieces. I disagree, well, not disagree, 
when you said about Douglas Louise going, he had to go for financial reasons. You said, I think he'd be a big miss. I thought it was. I, I liked him. I, I thought it was brilliant for them. Now who comes in to replace him? They obviously have Tielemans, who again, a little bit inconsistent, but I think he is a, a really good player. He's not that number six footballing number six. I don't think he is one that more likes to get forward. I don't really see. The Anana thing, I've, I've not seen it in, while, while he's been at Everton. I didn't see I'm, I'm it. I didn't see it at that. Belgium either. When he said 50 million quid for him, I just thought, oh, that sounds a little bit too much. Now, look, Henry, being the manager, is he, he might get something out of him. It might be a club that suits him. I don't know. But I, uh, where I'm stood now, 50 million for him just seems like a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I, I was never really impressed with him too much at Everton. I, I thought he did all right when I saw him for Belgium. Maybe a different style of football as well. But as I said, it'd be interesting to see if they can replace. Luis in there, but I mean another team who will be looking to take your place and fighting for those top four positions will be Spurs. Yeah, Lav. come on, talk to me. What, what are we thinking? <laughs> well, I think I'm really, I'm excited for the new season. Um, you say that every season. Yeah, I know. I mean, like we are, I, I am excited every season. So <clears throat> um, you've got to remember where we where we are with Poster Coglu. The, 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 the lot, of, you know, criticisms of how we defended, how open we ha have been at times, but really he's the project at the start of when he took over at the Spurs is to change the philosophy of the football club and change how the fans felt about it. And he's done that <clears throat> without, without question. The difference from the club that we supported under Conte to the one we've got right now is starting day. And, you know, uh, Villa quite rightly got a lot of plaudits for finishing the Champions League, but we were two points off them um, in the start of what is considered to be a, maybe a three or four year project with Posta Cogli. You know, we spent decent amounts of money, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for a new season. We're playing good football again and there's an identity to the way we're doing things. You say a three or four year pro per project. Yeah. Do you think he'll, he'll, he'll be there that long? Yeah, I don't know what... I, the people are asking this. What are you, <laughs> people, <laughs> but no, this but, but why, why, why isn't that question aimed at Ars, uh, Emery and, and Villa? He's or, got in the top four, he's or, achieved something. So, or Tottenham, Sean Dyche, for What I'm saying for is, you, you, we're Tottenham... I, I think, if you're a Tottenham fan, or if it's your club, you always think they'll do a little bit more than maybe... Most people, I, would say, I think most people in here would say Tottenham are a, a team who would, would fight for the top four, would maybe just miss out. Well, in the past, when you've done really well, you know what Pochettino did was brilliant. Mm. Do you think he's capable and you're actually getting his back to where Pochettino was getting you consistently in the top four? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, there's, there's, there's Postacoglu's tactics and his ability to motivate and you've got to give him time to create a squad to see what we're capable of. It's not just a case of taking another manager's players and, and, and fitting, fitting them into a system that's completely different to everything they're used to. So it's unfair, we don't know, but it's unfair to judge him on the fact that we didn't qualify for the Champions League this year. You know, I, I absolutely believe that he has the ability as a manager to deliver and create great moments for Tottenham. And I feel we, we will finish in the Champions League places this season. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm super confident. Scores, you watched them last year, I'm sure you would have, I'm sure you would have loved watching them. I, I uh, love most watching people them, yeah, enjoyed yeah. watching yeah. them. Yeah, but it think always came with a sort of element of, we well, love watching Spurs because it's mental. Yeah, right? well, I'm coming to the book now. Uh, <laughs> but do you think they would have to change it or alter anything to sort of be more successful, maybe get in the top four in terms of being stronger defensively? I don't think he will, will I? I, I, I really like the manager. I, He's, he's adamant. Remember the game last year? They got two or three sent off, and he just no, kept no, no, doing no. the same thing. Look, it was, it was great to watch, but it was fucking madness. No, no, it was meant. To, no, 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 it, it was but meant. Yeah, to, I'm this, not going to change the way I do things. But and, in, in, in that moment, it was about instilling an ideology in the players. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It was. Right. Yeah. So it didn't matter. What, we were always going to lose that game down to nine men. I thought that was important, and the fact that he won't shift. What you just said, he won't shift from yeah. like, the, the fullback. I, I admire him for that, and I. I do enjoy watching his team. I like watching him speak, like listening to him. I think he's, I think he's brilliant. Um, I think it's a bold shout saying you'll be in the top four. I, I, I think I think the top three are virtually done for me already in Liverpool, City, and Arsenal. And no. there's like four or five teams. I think. I think third. I think Spurs are going to finish third. You think they finish third? What, uh, you know what, what, that isn't a mental shout. No, no it is. Not, it's not a mental no, shout. No, it probably won't it. happen, but it's not a mental shout. Yeah. It will happen. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced of it. What, and the, the, the way, Jamie, the way you're just looking at me, man, this guy's an idiot. But I, I just I genuine, genuinely believe, based you're on what the, I saw last Are you in the Europa League? I think we could, yeah. You could finish third in that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take fifth in the Europa League. Are, are you happy with the people who've actually gone? Uh, Dyer's moved on, Hoiberg, those type of players. Yeah. They weren't fans' favourites, were they? Are you glad? Well, I mean, Eric Dyer should be 
greatly respected for his time at Spurs, you know, 10 years or so. So uh, he was popular, but perhaps more for his statesman-like behaviour and, and, and how he talked about the football club less than his abilities on the pitch. Although he has, you know, gone to Bayern Munich, to be fair. Um, yeah, the Hoybier, uh, um Dyer didn't fit into the Proskogli system and he's brought in players that are profile players. So Archie Gray, you know, massive money for an 18-year-old, but looks... Looks a business, one to look out for, for sure. But he's, the problem, the biggest problem, there were, there were a couple of problems with Postacoglu's system last season. It was how open we were at the back, but moreover, how our inability to keep possession in, in, in difficult areas in, in, in the front three. And um, that, that will be massive this season. What lessons can be learned and fixed based on how uh, exposed we were at times next, last year. But um, yeah, third. We'll go to Adam. On Manchester United, eighth last season, I think your worst finish in the Premier League, but you finished the season yeah. with the FA Cup. Where are you, where are Manchester United supporters right now on, on the situation at the top of the club with the manager and the ownership? I've, I've just been on a tour, so I'm feeling super confident because it's been, you know, you're in the sun in California and all that, and you're watching your team, Ruben Van Nistelrooy's there. Got a little bit of swagger. Did you not watch the Liverpool game? <laughs> I, was say, I, was, yeah. I was, I was, to be fair, at half time, I switched off. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the bar, um, but no, it was it was good to be out there, and you, you kind of see what's going on with with Ineos's introductions of Wilcox and Ashworth and Barada, and it feels like there's a collaborative effort going on now. You see them all at the training pitch, that obviously brings pressures with it to the manager, I think, because he's being constantly watched. But I did want to see Eric Ten Hag with that structure in place. I wanted to see him with those guys in place because I think he can do something at the club, and I think a lot of the coaches that were being linked. Gareth Southgate and all that, like, oh, do me a favour. I didn't, I didn't want them anywhere near Manchester United. So I wanted to see Ten Hag give him some time, even before the cup final. Seeing him win it, it was great. Obviously, great day out at Wembley. But we need to do something proper in the Premier League this season. It hasn't started well because we bring in Lenny Yarrow, young lad, he gets injured for three months, um, kind of continuing our form from last year with the injuries. And there's a few places we need to fix, like, the holding midfield position for me, when we were speaking about Liverpool with it there, I think, I think in a couple of years, everyone's going to be knocking on Palace's door for Adam Wharton um, and the price for him could go sky high because everyone needs a player like that at the moment and that's someone that we need. Casemiro's legs are gone um, at times and I think if we have to play him 40, 50 games next season, then we're in trouble. So we do need to bring someone in in that position. But it does feel like there's been a, a shift um, in... In momentum and it feels like there's a little bit more confidence around the club when you've got football people making decisions with the Glazers it kind of felt like they went all right you're the manager and I piss off and make it work and they never really seem to help the manager out and it does feel like they're, they're doing that at the moment um, but he needs to get off to a good start because with Rude being there I feel like a couple of games in if he's not if the camera's going to keep cutting <laughs> to Rude looking at his watch and all that and it, the talk's going to start for Rude Van Nistelrooy we've got to do some business we keep looking at a right back, which I don't mind, but left back's a big issue for me. You've got Luke Shaw, could only be asked to get fit for England, isn't, isn't fit for Manchester United. <laughs> so um, <laughs> he'll probably turn up broken biscuits at Carrington this summer. Um, and then you've got Terrell Malassia, who's an NFT for all his night. No, he's, 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 never, he's never been about. So we need to sort out left back. We need to get in another centre. What has happened to him? Do, do Malassia, we know? Has anybody said what's wrong with him? I genuinely don't know. It's been, must be he's 14 Christmas months again, now. Isn't he, or Christmas again. Yeah, he's, he's out again. Like, I, I don't know what's happened to him. And he, was, he wasn't a starter for us, but he was someone that challenged Luke Shaw. And Luke Shaw needs a little prod. He needs, he needs a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I don't think he'd be a challenge. He's more of a replacement if Luke Shaw's injured, isn't he? Mm. There's but, not many better than Luke Shaw when he's fit. What, what, what do you think, Scholes? I mean, you seem pretty confident oh. in the fact that, that there's structure behind and the club's more together, and you think that'd be a big help. You, Still got a lot of business to do, though. No, but what I mean is... Yeah. A, 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 do you share that confidence just because there's no new owners or you just look at the manager? <laughs> no, I, I have heard a lot of United fans saying recently that they're, they're excited for the new season. I, I'm struggling to get excited for it. We, we, we were talking beforehand about the middle of the pitch being a, an area where it was just fucking empty mm. most of the t time. Team just breaking through us all day long. You mentioned Casemiro's legs going a little bit. He's never been that type of player anyway, mm. as he? he's never been the quickest around the pitch. He had great players around him. I think at the start of last year, with Mason Mount coming into the team, I think Ten Hag is quite a... He's a coach who likes to go for it, I think. Mm. Then he had to change because it wasn't quite working. I think he tried to play Casemiro with Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes, which two mm. number 10s, two footballers really, who 
don't, I haven't really bothered about playing that position well. So that quickly changed. Obviously, Mason Mount got injured. Are we going to see a fit Mason Mount this year? He, even if we see a fit Mason Mount, when he resigned, he, he, he doesn't play instead of Bruno Fernandes. And that's yeah. the only position I see him playing. But I, I still think there are other areas of the pitch where, which are a problem. You, you mentioned the young centre-half coming in. Yeah, great, but he's 18 years of age. He's, he's already got injured. Martinez injured a lot. Maguire got injured towards the end of the rest last season. Lindelof, no Varane. And Var look, Varane was good, but again, injured all the time. Mm. I, I, I still worry about My the goal. I still worry about the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper is a big yeah. concern for me. Even watching the pre-season games, a couple of goals he, he conceded against Liverpool. Course, I, I worry to death about him. Do you, do you worry for the manager? Because there will be a lot of eyes yeah. on him because of the situation at the end of last season when there was yeah. that sort of two or three week period where he wasn't quite sure if he was still going to be the manager. I mean, you know, we all know the you know the world works. That if Manchester United get off to a poor start, there'll be so many eyes on him. What, what do you, how, how do you see that playing out? Yeah, I, I'm concerned for him. He has to get off to a good start. It has to be so so much better than last season. You know, when when, when they stuck with him, I, I was quite happy because. I do like the thought of continuity. We've been through so many managers now, it's just it's just ridiculous. But on the other hand to that, from the first season to the second season, you, you like to see a bit of improvement. Mm. But anything, it, it, it got worse. Mm. We, we, I think the injuries didn't help last season. I know I'm kind of making an excuse for him. I think he got a lot of things wrong. But the injuries were disastrous. And I, there's talk about us possibly bringing in De Ligt, um, who I think could be a good signing, because then you can... You don't have to rely upon Lindelof and Maguire, who I don't think will ever be good enough for Manchester United. Do, do, do you know what? No, Manchester United talk about pl bringing players in who can't get in their team. Mm. In, in, no, from Bayern Munich, he's, he's, he's not played for them. Yeah. That, that, that's a big. Con he had a couple. That's to be a big concern for me, especially when Eric Dyer is playing in front of yeah. him. So, yeah, I think he, I think no, he did that, have a few no, injuries. I'm there. not yeah. joking. That is a, that is a massive concern for me. Mm. When, when you're bringing in players for 40, 50 million pound, okay, just because he's played for him three or four years ago. Juventus got rid of him, he wasn't good, at, good enough at Juventus, he's obviously not been good enough at Bayern Munich. And he's coming towards us like a, almost like a second-rate defender now. Mm. I, don't, I don't know, I think, I think Delit would be a good signing. I like that. I like Do you know what he might be? Like uh, don't get me wrong. Well, the manager just knows him, doesn't he, from Ajax? Yes, of, of course, that's, a big, that's a big boost. Well, that's and he's good sign. He signed Anthony as well. Which, <laughs> yeah, but you've also <laughs> got to look at forward players. We, we haven't got... Hoyland, could he score... 25 goals for this season, I'd, I'd be amazed. I'd, I'd be surprised. When you look at someone like Ivan Tony, yeah. if he could come to you, I'd would he score 25? I, I think he could. I, think I feel could. sorry for Hoyle and me. Yeah, I, look, I think, he, I think he's really good, Carol, but he's been brought into this country as a, yeah. what was he, 19 years of age? I, I he's asked to be yeah. the, the number nine for Man, for, for Man United. It's like, it's an iconic role of yeah. going after players who are scoring 25, 30 goals, brilliant goals and, and winning league it titles. It feels like he should have gone to like a, I would say a mid-table Premier League club for two or three years and then Is, is that, that one? He, he, <laughs> to, <laughs> to me, he should have been a second... Uh, you said that, not me. <laughs> he should have been a second, third or fourth striker yeah, yeah. at a big club. Now, Bring an experience, and they brought Xerxes, is it? Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest, I'm, I've never seen him play. A big season for Rashford, you know. He's got, he's got, he's got to regain. Yeah, I, I'm thinking more about centre forward. This, but yeah, yeah, I don't think Marcus. I think, he's got I think Marcus could off. play centre forward, but he, he's much better to that left hand side. I think goals are going to be a problem. I, I had a little look at Xerxes. I don't think he's a, a great goal scorer mm. where he's been in Italy. He's Bayern Munich second team. I think he's got like 40 goals in nearly 150 games or something, mm. which. Coming to the Premier League, it's going to be it's going to be more difficult, and that that, that right hand side is a bit of a worry as well. Because you look at that and you go, we spent about two hundred million on Sancho, Anthony, and Ahmad. Yeah, and I think Ahmad's it's got also Ganacho could play there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ganacho can play there, but I'd like to see him on the left challenging Rashford. Rashford needs to be kept on his toes a bit this season. But out of the four or five, and they're probably the best two, but they both want to play on the left hand side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which could be um, a problem. Adam, what success for Manchester United this season at Ten Hag? Get back in the top four. See where we're at in Christmas, and then we'll never know, won't it? But is, I think it could be a weird season. We don't know what Liverpool are going to look like. Aston Villa could struggle with that addition of Champions League football. Uh, that top four could become doable for a lot of teams. So, and if you can get top four and then build from there, make, make the manager feel comfortable in his position again, um, and hopefully get a little bit of confidence. I've seen a swagger from him, you know, and he seems to have a little bit He's of a. Dutch. They've all got a swagger, He has a little bit it? of an aggression about him. Like, I, I like this comment after the cup final where he went, well, I'll go and win trophies somewhere else then if they don't want me. I, I like that. I hope he brings that into the season because last season he felt like 
He was a little bit overwhelmed by it all at times and everything was catching up with him. I like him, man. I want to see him be a success. So gone hopefully. by October. Huh? He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Before Ange, you're mental, ain't you? First, he's first out the door, stitched on. I'm we'll be singing Ruban just for a trial of our last, so it'll be all right. Yeah. Scorsi, where, where do you think you know, he'll finish? <laughs> I think the very best they can do is fourth. Mm. Um, they, they've got to improve on the eighth, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> has, the manager, has the manager got to change the way he's he set his team up? I hadn't mentioned the injuries before. Do you think injuries was the problem or the, the tactical setup of the team or was it a mixture both. of both? Uh, yeah, I, I think probably a mixture of both. As I said earlier, this is a, I, I thought he, could, he thought he could be a little bit gung-ho in the Premier League and he, he found out quickly that he couldn't be. And you, you, you think about the, the cup final where there were a lot more discipline in the middle of the pitch. Amrabat played, got they around the pitch main. Right Pardon? Play without a striker. Play without a striker, exactly, yeah. Sometimes when you play against these big teams, you've got to sacrifice mm. your belief sometimes. And we'll, we'll see. We've seen in the Premier League last, last year with Burnley. Mm. There'll be Southampton this year who we'll, we'll try and play the same way, but you've got to sacrifice your way sometimes just to get yourself results. And it's all about getting results. Performers, forget about it. Mm. You, if you win a cup final, it's got to be the result against the, the best team. Now, there will be times in the Premier League where you can go for it and you... You might be OK against some teams just being a bit more expansive, but in the main, uh, there's, there's so many good teams knocking about. I think you've just got to be disciplined. There's a nucleus there, I think, to be hopeful about, though. You look at Kobe Maino, Garnacho, you know, Hoyland is still young. You're bringing in Lenny Arrow. There's like a nucleus of young players. I think there's a few coming through the, the, the academy as well that are looking good. So there, there is hope there for, I think, Manchester United fans, uh, especially for some of those young lads at the class. Newcastle, another team who finished above Manchester United last season. Uh, Lee, the Newcastle fan. How long will you have Eddie Howe before he becomes the England manager? So initially when Amanda <laughs> Stavely and me and dad departed, I was like, mm, Eddie lost an ally. That's what I was concerned about. But Darren Neal's recently come out and said that Eddie Howe had actually signed a contract last season which was kept a lot from the media. And even us as Newcastle fans, we were really surprised. I'm like, what? what? We didn't say that. I think it would cost the FA somewhere, what, 15 to 20 million to get him out? Mm. Do they really want to pay that and get him? Show, it, show, your, show your money then? I don't think he will go. I think there is a little bit of uncertainty at the moment with the change, especially with Paul Mitchell coming in. And obviously he's done a couple of interviews in pre-season. That and didn't you, go down well, did it, with Eddie Howe? He, he came out and publicly said something, didn't he, about having more control at Newcastle in terms of the transfer and the run of the club. Do you think that was a, a clash early on between him and the, the new director of football and, and Paul Mitchell? I wouldn't say a clash. I think it was, it's a little bit of uncertainty. He doesn't know the boundaries he's talked about. Transfers haven't gone that well this summer. If you look at who were brought in, it's basically a couple of goalkeepers back up. We're going to be signing a Sheffield United striker who hasn't scored a Premier League goal. There's injuries last season galore. Everyone's talking about injuries. We had the worst by a mile. We had two goalkeepers on the bench, something like for 20 games running. And that effect of can Carl Wilson stay fit? Because he brings the goals if something happens to Isaac. We need that right wing position strengthened. It's not a great side on, the, on that uh, football pitch. So there is a little bit of doubt. But one thing that we have, funny enough, in our favour is we don't have European football this season. Every single other club that we've talked about does and I think that will help us in, the, in this season coming up where we're only playing one game a week whereas the rest of the, the teams are playing two and I think that will help us. How would you feel about obviously the ownership come in talk a lot of money you're probably the team who've been probably affected most in that you'd love to go buy players left right and centre the way probably Chelsea and Manchester City did in the past before these new rules come in. I, I mean how frustrating that for you as a fan? It's very frustrating because you've seen Chelsea do it, you've seen Manchester City do it. We've got the money, we've got the richest owners, but we don't have the richest club. So we've got to build a commercial side. We had to sell two youngsters on we call a PSR deadline on June the 30th. We had to sell them just to balance the books. It is frustrating because we know that the money is there. We can go out and pick a player because the money is there. We can pay, pay them the wages, but I understand why the rules are there. But sometimes it, you need to look at it and it needs adjusting, I feel, because... There's clubs that can go crazy and Newcastle aren't allowed to and obviously they don't want another Manchester City happening where there's another dominant club buying players and be dominant for years and that's why the rules are in there, protect smaller clubs and so on. But 
it's very frustrating because we've got to sell before we buy, which is mental. Well, one team who always spends money is Chelsea, and we've got uh, Alex here <laughs> representing <laughs> Chelsea. I, I mean, like what, I what need is... to be on the couch lying down for this. <laughs> come sit over here. I mean, another change in the summer. I mean, I, I was gobsmacked that Pochettino left, but you've got a new manager in now, Maresca. Yeah. The pre-season's been, been shocking, hasn't it? I just, I don't even think everybody else gets to sit here and talk about what's going on on the pitch and that. We're not even there. I can't, I can't tell you. Anyone in this room who sits and says they think they know what Chelsea's going to do this season is full of it. I've got 46 players on the list still at the moment. And then junk coming out of Maresco already about how Conor Gallagher and how oh, it's the league that have done this to us and we're having to sell all our homegrown talent because of the financial... We'll stop buying everything with a price tag on it. Like, there's just no self-control whatsoever. And like you say, it was gobsmacking. The only explanation, plausible explanation for Pochettino going is that he had had enough. And he's literally said, give me my retirement plan. I'll walk. I'll keep my mouth shut. You can have it. Um, but it's hard. I was talking to Clive before. It's, it's not about winning. Chelsea fans aren't annoyed because we're not winning everything. I think everyone here gets that because they're proper fans. What is annoying is watching some faceless organisation that won't even talk to the fans, kind of ripping the still beating heart out of the club, if you like, and getting rid of, and the disrespect with which it's perceived they're treating players like Conor Gallagher, like Mason Mount. Um, I don't think we can even be talking about what's going on on the pitch, because who knows? You've spoken so passionately there about the club and how you feel about the yeah. ownership. How long do you think it'll be before what you're saying there really transmits itself to the masses, if you like, at Stamford Bridge, and there is a, almost like a, a campaign to almost <laughs> sack the. You know, we hear that a lot, don't we? Sack the board. I mean, yeah. I mean, how close are Chelsea fans to really revolting against the, the ownership uh, of the club? We th see the problem is that the match-going fans are a minority, and they don't care. They either get it and they don't care, or they don't get it. I mean, they were told at the very highest end of inside the club by someone who's not there anymore. Um, you need to go and talk to the fans. And like, if there is a plan, tell them what it is and they'll get behind you. But um, that washed for a while. We saw progression. We finally kind of broke our heads above water and saw something better at the end of last season. And then, I mean, if, if he gets to swear, I get to swear about it. Right? <laughs> then they shit the bed and get rid of the manager. And, and we're back. I mean, at the end of last season, I might have said to you, I want to go for top four next season. That, that's why I see us back up there challenging. Now, I just like put us anywhere in the top half of the table and whatever. But yeah, like you say, I'm, I'm not convinced there's not a complete meltdown um, on its way unless I just come out and talk to us and tell us what the plan is and, and tell us what the thinking is because it doesn't feel like there is any at all. What, what's your thinking, Scorsi, on this, this Chelsea situation? Ownership, change of manager, players left, right and centre coming in? Yeah, look, I, I don't know too much about the ownership. I, I totally agree with what she said, though. In at the end of last season, did, didn't they win five games on the trot? Yeah, yeah. So you you saw building, oh, you yeah. saw a progression, you saw a decent manager. I mean, all right, we hated his guts on principle when he first arrived. And I used yeah, to, look, like, look, he's a, he's a great manager. He is, I, and I, I thought he yeah, dealt with a lot of grace yeah. as well. The yeah. situation he was in. But he's a classy man, isn't he? Yeah, what has got a lot. And, like, a and lot what of our like owners that. aren't is classy. Yeah, and when you saw them go, I thought, right, here we go. Chelsea have, you know, they're going to be a, a lot better next year. They're going to challenge him. They'll get it right through the summer, which you'd have to expect him to because of the, the experience he's got at, at, at big football clubs. Now, to bring Maresca in was, I was amazed more than anything. Um, to come from Leicester, he'd been manager at Palmer, I think, and had a complete, complete disaster. Yeah. Obviously got the Leicester job on. And he's probably getting his jobs on the back of working with Pep, really. As a lot of people do, a lot of uh -huh. people got jobs at Man United. In the past, didn't it, with, yeah. with Jose? Anyone who worked with Jose got a yeah. job, didn't well, they? Well, dude, happy United, Brian yeah. Kidd, Blackburn, oh. Steve McLaren got jobs, Mike Trill. Mm. No, there's a list of them. Carlos Queiroz went to Real Madrid yeah. from the United States. So there is, there's, there's a list of them. Now, I think a, a Chelsea manager, now, a Chelsea gone down this head coach role. Oh, uh, I, does, yeah. I feel like Pochettino went because Pochettino was not allowed an opinion and yeah. not allowed to have a say and a stake in what he was yeah. trying to do. And they literally, they it, it does seem like they want a puppet and they'll always find one. Yeah. I'd take the job for nine months. I work for nine months, then you fire me and I walk away with 10 million pounds and never have to work again. Yeah. Yes, please. Well, well, well I see Maresca as, as a coach. He, he looks like he'll just be wearing a tracksuit for the rest of his life as, as a coach. Do you know what I mean? With his initials on and all that. 
stuff. <laughs> um, but at Chelsea, you need you need to have character and personality to, to manage that football club to have success. You think of the ones they've had. I just over think the what years. they've obliterated is yeah. our identity. Well, it's all completely. they said coach stuff, isn't it? Yeah. All they said coach. Well, and as well in the squad, tell me, tell me what we are. Like, are there 11 I, I players in there you, that might be good? Probably. I haven't got a clue. You've, you've signed a couple of players, a couple of midfield players. Were probably two of your worst players last year. <laughs> what did you pay for them? 100, 100 odd million? Lots. And I know you're getting rid of Conor Gallagher now, 30 million. He was probably one of your better players. I know that's all mm -hmm. your P PSR reasons. But the Centre PSR phone? reason, it's funny. Yeah. People keep saying the PSR reason, we've got to sell Conor Gallagher or we've got to sell a, a local player. Just stop buying players. Just, stop buying you players. That's what we were we saying mean. before. Just he was going to do players. this rant for me because I was going to say it. I'll buy better but players. Yeah. yeah. Players I'm, I'm, I'm getting Stop enough. buying everything. I'm getting enough, yeah. I, I come in, you, you, listen, we all do it in the summer, don't we? we, we you've got Sky Sports News on, you've seen something at the bottom, who's buying who or whatever. It's always Chelsea putting a bid in. And <laughs> yeah. it's 20 million for this player. And they'll buy a goalkeeper and I'll be thinking, they've got a goalkeeper. Or there'll be a strike. I think they've got three. You've got five keepers yeah, exactly. now, I think. You just, I, I think those people, we talk about Todd Bowley, but I think people underneath him who actually maybe do the running of the club and maybe scouting players and directors of football, they're obsessed with buying players and, and they yeah. possibly feel like, if we're not buying players, what am I actually doing? I do get that feeling with those Chelsea people that it's like almost that championship manager where you're just constantly yeah. trading players. and See, they feel people like they keep saying it's that. like football manager watching us do business. It's not. It's like watching AI run a football team. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you think they're trying to buy young players all the time? Uh, do they to sell them on later for, for profit? Is I, that the owners? I have no idea because they, they don't say. We don't know. They just keep spending all this money on all these players. I don't know where they fit in. I mean, like we could stick a pin in any one of our signings, but really, why bother? It feels like they're <laughs> trying to do what City have done with Alvarez. I'm not saying City have done that intentionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, but I think Chelsea are trying to do that. Well, now that apparently money. we're after an Atletico player. And this is, again, like with the, there's no thought process to going after a striker that is, OK, he's Atletico Madrid, but actually he spent last season playing a team I've never heard of somewhere in the depths of La Liga and scored eight goals. And we're going to spank like 50 million on him. Great. Well, <laughs> well, but I think you forget a little bit about, like, when you think of like this era of, of Pep and Klopp, Chelsea was so close to mm. break it. I mean, they beat Man City in a Champions League final. I think Liverpool, I think we, we beat them on penalties, beat us on penalties twice uh, to win domestic cups. So the games were so <coughs> tight, it was so close. Tuchel could take on Klopp, he could take on Pep Guardiola in one-off games and, and win those games. And then this new ownership comes in and it's just been a disaster mm -hmm. in terms of where you find yourselves are right now. And when you talk about bringing young players in to maybe sell them in the future or to, to create a great team, there's only Cole Palmer who you've brought in who most of us probably sit back and say, oh, he looks, he looks a, a tasty player. Yeah. And my worry for Chelsea would be, Pochettino's got to be given you know, a lot of credit for, for how Cole Palmer performed last season because no one expected that, not even Pep Guardiola, otherwise he probably wouldn't have sold them you know, for 40 million. And then you look, so you mightn't even have that, that Cole Palmer this season. I'm sure you will, because I think he's, he's fantastic, but a new manager comes in, it's different. And uh, uh, listen, me and Cole, we've talked about this before, the way the pre-season's gone, you've got Man City first game of the season. I'll be surprised if Maresca is the manager there at the end of the season. Very surprised. I do think this season, more than any, pre-season is just not a read of anything um, with the amount of players. that I mean, we're 10 days out now, aren't we? No, but get that. Yeah. 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 Okay. It just Celtic. feels like extended <laughs> training. You're going to be 4-0 by Celtic. Yeah, exactly. And I... I just don't. I don't know who who is his starting eleven. I don't know. Probably the eleven that are fit. I just. I don't know. I couldn't name you our starting eleven, and I don't think he could either. And that's concerning. I. I think if you're going to ask me to predict for Chelsea, uh, what's going to happen this season? I do. Frankly, getting to the end of the season without firing another manager is. Give us that. And somewhere in the top half, and you don't get an opinion because you haven't won anything. I feel sorry for you, I really do, right? Because <laughs> if I was in your, your shoes, I love it. You seriously, you've not won anything since a decade before the moon landings, and you feel sorry. Wow. For <laughs> uh, well, okay. Tell me why. Go on. No, no. But I, if I was, a, if I was, a, if I was a Chelsea fan, I'd look at the that squad of young players mm. that you had. And that could potentially, it was a dynasty for Chelsea, potentially, and it's all been sold. Well, 2021, kind of like you say, we were capable of beating City in that final. Um, we weren't capable of putting a run together of 38 games to beat them in the league, but we were on a stepping stone towards that, and this lot have just set fire to it all. It's crazy, yeah. And with what aim, none of us know, because they don't speak.
Well, Amy, I'm sure you're going to give me a bit of positivity about Ipswich. One of the stories, certainly, of last season, or the last couple of seasons, really, in the job that Kieran McKenna's done. I mean, how positive are you going into the new season and when you actually think about what happened last season to the three promoter teams all going down? I mean, how are you feeling about the new start of the season? Beyond excited. We've all been getting our new shirts lately and having the Premier League badge on it, having not had it for 20 years is just... It, I think we're all still on a high. I still get well... I still well up thinking about the day we went up and those final weeks, the build-up to it, just incredible. And it all just exemplified exactly what Kieran McKenna has done for us in the last three years. It's crazy. I've just been sat here thinking uh, my youngest is about to turn five and since I had him... We've been relegated, had a couple of years in League One, the worst time as fans. We've got promoted from League One straight up through the Championship. Everyone told us last year that leap is too big. You're going to struggle, you're going to, you need to be sensible. But we all just had this feeling because he is magic. He just knows exactly what he's doing. And I've got this feeling in the pit of my stomach that we could do something special again next year because we've got that momentum. Well, you, you speak a lot of the, about the manager, and it's obviously the great job that he's done, and you talk about the excitement of the last few weeks of the season. What were those few weeks after the end of the season like when it looked like he could move on? That he will always be the single most important signing of this summer. Had he gone, I think we would have all accepted that we were coming straight back down. He, is, he makes the right decisions for the players. He makes the right decisions for the games. He motivates the players. We... When we were in League One, that team was so divided and so... Um, like, Paul Cook came in and absolutely wiped the whole slate clean, got rid of everybody, because the negativity... People were getting just fed up, fans and players. So to see them all have pulled together, and that is Kieran McKenna that has done it. He has picked... He's even he's saying it in all his interviews at the moment um, about it being the right type of player coming to our club. We're not just going to fill holes in. We need people who are willing to, you know, care about the community, to care about the club. I think that's what we've got now is... Uh, yeah, look, we've got League One players playing in Premier League now. It's nuts but they love the club and they play for that badge and they play for him. So he is, for me, the single most important signing that we've made. Scholes, you mentioned before to me that you thought they may have an outside chance of, of staying up. But well, I think at Burnley last season, and you said before as well, they didn't adapt. Do you think Ipswich, or, or that could be a big learning curve for them, what happened to Burnley last season, and that they will have to adapt if they are going to stay in the league? Yeah, I think so. I don't see Kieran McKenna as that type of cultures a, a Vincent company where you, you know you're a little bit stuck in your ways and you want to play that same brilliant football to get out of the league I think it's such a different I think they play such an exciting brand of football it, it, it is great to watch they throw bodies for and it reminds me a little bit of, of Man United teams they, I watched them loads last year they, they scored that many amount of late goals as well when they're really struggling they're behind they're coming back they're scoring last minute equalises last, last minute winners I just think they'll they'll take it by surprise, and they will hurt. They will hurt a lot of teams. Now, look, at the other end, they're going to be put, facing better quality. That there's no doubt about that. And yeah. I think at home, especially as well. I think if you can get your home form right, I think I think you'll. I, I think they could stay up. Are you excited about who you've brought in? in um, I've seen that you obviously brought you know Delap in from Manchester City. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, for me, the main one was Amari Hutchinson. We've had him. He joined us last year. He was one of the absolute key players for us last year. Scored some incredible goals. Scored 10 over the whole season. But, like, really important ones. Again, uh, a draw away at Hull right in the closing end of the season and then scored the final goal of the season on promotion day. Um, he's just a really exciting young player perhaps one of the ones that Chelsea have bought to sell on for a little bit of money, although I don't think you got um, um, as much of out of us as you might for other players. <laughs> but I think he's been incredible. And, and so he, for me, again, it goes back to what I said about keeping that momentum up and keeping the right kind of people at our club. And it feels like what that is, what we have at the minute. But Kieran has said that for him, it's about making sure we have two quality players for every position. And that is where I'm just sat listening to you guys talk about these names that are just blowing my mind. And I just think, yeah, you know, we, we haven't even got a first-team squad really yet and he wants the bigger squad and we, we just we've got a long way thing. to go. <laughs> 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 is there anything like Amari, we'll take them. <laughs> well, Jay, Leicester fan, I mean, you can see the excitement here. 
from Ipswich coming up. Is it similar with Leicester? Because obviously you've been there before, you've actually won the Premier League. How are you feeling about coming back up? I think it's a bit different to Ipswich. I mean, they've not been in the Premier League for a while. We sort of went down when no one really expected us to go down. Um, I'm excited about the new season, but at the same time, we've got FFP. We've already got a points deduction, which is going to come at some point. That it's in the re region of between six to 15 points, which is a lot of points to get deducted. Um, and of course, that means we can't spend as much money. The players we want aren't wanting to come to us, and the players we are buying, not really the sort of caliber players to sort of, I don't think, keep us up. So I think it's going to be a struggle. I'd say anything above 17th and I'll be happy. This what, 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 what do you think about Maresca going initially? Were you disappointed? I mean, what was the feeling around the manager last season? Because you were expected to come straight back up, weren't you? Yeah, I think um, there could have been a handful of managers that could have got us up last season, but Maresca was the one to do it. And he got us playing some nice football. Um, I think towards the end of the season, when we were dropping in form, um, he sort of was very stubborn and wasn't changing it. I think the best performance I saw from us was when we beat Southampton 5-0. And um, at the end of the game, he came out and said, I wasn't happy with that performance because we didn't play anything like Maresca wanted us to play. So I think for this season, I actually wasn't, and I think a lot of Leicester fans weren't actually that upset with Maresca leaving and getting Steve Cooper in because Steve Cooper, I think, is an honest manager. He'll say it how it is. Um, he won't take anything from the players. He won't, he'll just play solid football. Um, which I think is what we need. I think Moresco would have been too stubborn um, and kept us playing in this passing possession-based football, sort of like what Burnley did last season. They were very stubborn in how they played. I think if we had Moresco, we would have done that and I think we would have just dropped straight back So you actually think losing your manager in the summer, Moresco, and bringing Steve Cooper in, who has got Premier League experience, is actually a bonus for you? Yeah, I mean, Steve Cooper kept Notting Forest up when he was there. Um, so he's sort of been there, done it? I know it's a bit different because we've got a points deduction and whatnot and we've already... Have, have this style of play. Um, he, he, we've not got too many new players coming in, so it's going to be hard to sort of integrate his style of play to it. But um, yeah, I, I wasn't happy, but um, I was happy for the £10 million donation from Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> well, Martin, the Southampton fan, is it fair to say your manager, I mean, he, he likes to play almost total football, doesn't he, Russell Martin? Do you think he'll be one of those managers who we're talking about next season saying he should have changed, he should have adapted, or would admire in the fact that he stuck to his principles? I really like him. I think he'll adapt as well, because throughout the season, we let a lot of goals in last year in the Championship. We let a huge amount in the Premier League last time. But the one thing he did, he adapted when we got to the playoffs. And we were, like I said, we were leaking goals, we went to Leicester, got absolutely thumped that night. And we thought it was all over at that stage. Went to Ipswich, we, we lost late on, late, a lot of late goals in. But when we got to the playoff campaign, he made us harder to beat. He changed the, the, he went to a back five and the playoff fight was unbelievable. I thought we were superb that day, but he did adapt and I think he will have to do that, do that next year without any doubt. He's made some really good signings. They've got Flynn Downs in the door who I think will be immense. He's a brilliant player and he deserves a really good chance at the Premier League. Taylor Harwell Bellis in from Man City, brilliant bit of business, 20 million I think is a steal. I think he's going places big time. The one area that really concerns me for Russell was he likes, like you say, play total football, Jamie. And he will need a goalkeeper that can play how he wants to play. He doesn't have that. I think Aaron Ramsdale is somebody that he needs to try and get in if he can do, do alone. And a striker as well, because we've got to find goals. Adam Armstrong scored goals last season in the Championship. But the prior two years, he only scored four in two seasons. He was brilliant last year, 24 goals. He was our talisman. But we're going to have to really step up next year. Home form will be so key for me. Um, we need to make St Mary's a really hard place again. No, back at the Dow, Paul would say, when you went down to the Dow, it was a tough place to play, wasn't it? Tough place, yeah. So we got... We... That's tough, they changed kits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we, and the home form's everything, isn't it? As a promoted side, I think we need our fans behind us. It's good. We have sticky moments. I think you'd have more chance at the Dow. Yeah, oh, definitely. The Dow was worth so many you points. Think about that with the Ipswich ground as well. That's a really tight ground. Atmosphere, the atmosphere there can be brilliant. Those that, new that stadiums really don't help. create it, do they? Those new stadiums like what you've got down yeah, yeah. areas, they don't create the atmosphere. But the one thing we did do the back end of last season, our fans were immense. In the playoff campaign, everybody come together, stuck together, really got behind the side. And if we can do that next year, we give ourselves a real chance. But we will need everybody. Russell will bring in leaders. He, he, he wants characters over talent, he said, and I think that's really important. The, the big worry I have about Southampton is the goals are going to score. I think you mentioned, mentioned it there yeah. with Adam Armstrong. I always think teams that come up, if they can score goals, it, it gives you a real chance. That's why I've got half a fancy for Ipswich. I, 
I really think they'll score goals. They play brilliant attacking footballs. They throw players in the box. Mm. I think you're going to have to rely on the likes of Adam Adam Armstrong to score your goals, and I'm just not sure. We've, we've brought Brenton Diaz in, but I'm not sure here. Again, what they need. yeah, he weaves in a Premier League with Sheffield United, wasn't he? Yeah, he got six in 14 games in a short period of time, just on loan end of last season. But I think we need more. Yeah. I think we need to go and find somebody that's played in the Premier League that can lead the line and find goals because a goalkeeper and a striker would be everything to us. Who, who do you think will stay up out of those three? Ipswich. Do the two goals down? I think, uh, sorry, I think Southampton will go down, yeah. Uh, I think that's a very... Burnley-like situation. I, look, I, I don't mind managers having their philosophies and, and mm. sticking to the ways of being stubborn about it because that, that, that's the way they believe it should play yeah. and that's the way they want to get out of it, as company did, uh, as they found out they fell short and they couldn't score enough goals as well. And I think Southampton will be very similar. Leicester, I don't really know. To, I can't work Leicester out. Mm. I, I think he made a lot of really good points, but the one advantage you have, they've got a manager who's got experience of staying in the Premier League. The, the punch... Obviously, deduction could be a problem. But I, I, I think something about Leicester is they'll have that mentality. I think sometimes a mentality of believing you're a Premier League club. I think at times last season, even with Luton, who I thought were brilliant, mm. they don't believe they're a Premier, yeah. Premier League club. And I think that'll probably be a, a situation for Ipswich. Even your supporters and players playing in the Premier League, do we actually belong here? You know, that's because you, you haven't been there for so long. So I always felt last season, it felt like the three teams who came up felt like they were championship teams. And the three teams that went into the championship were actually Premier League clubs in some ways, but Leeds obviously didn't yeah. make it back. So I actually think that mentality maybe of Southampton and Leicester maybe gives you more of an opportunity than, uh, than Ipswich. It can give you a bit of arrogance as well, Leeds United, sorry, but they were too arrogant as it turned out in the end and they didn't, they didn't keep going. Everyone said we were going to bottle it, we were going to tail off at the end. And that confidence, that excitement actually was what pushed us forward. And I do think we might be the ones who can do that again next year. I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>so prediction time all of your uh, hot takes of the season big steve come on shock us what do you mean what, what, what's your what's your hot take what's your, what's your big prediction um, of the season <laughs> i think aston villa are going to struggle and i think crystal palace are going to do well yeah good show that yeah okay mm. clive I think Arsenal are going to do quite well. Um, <laughs> um, and I think um, one of the big things that happened this year will be the amount of games. I think it may impact the quality of football we're going to see. I think there's a lot of games at the top end of the, of the league, extra Champions League games. And I think we've already just come out of a Euros where we've watched a lot of tired players. So I think quality of matches is going to be key and how you manage that situation for teams. So the one the ones that can stay fit and healthy, that's going to be the big talking point for someone like you. OK, Adam? I think Marcus Rashford's going to have a big season this season. You know. Why? I think he has to. I, I, I've seen this. He looked, I know it was very briefly, but he looks like he's got a little bit of drive, a little bit of confidence. Did in he him smile? He's doing things. He, he doesn't, he never smiles. <laughs> but I don't mind that as long as he scores some goals. Like, it looks like he's doing things off instinct again, which I, I like. He, he seemed like he just had the world on his shoulders and he... he couldn't enjoy it. Uh, hopefully, he starts enjoying his footballing and he gets back in the goals. Martin from Southampton. Uh, for me, I think Ipswich and Southampton will both stay up. And I think we'll both do it. I think we just might have enough about us. I think the fans will be, be massive, like I said. Um, I'm going to go with Tottenham sneak top four. I think they'll do it this year. I think po I like Postacoglu. I like the way he plays football. So, fancy you guys for, for top four. Up Alex, come on, shock us. Something on Chelsea. <clears throat> We might not end the season with the same manager we start with. <laughs> that was mine. That was mine. All right, saying. at least one of our players that we've signed, of the four million that we've signed, will turn out to be semi decent. Luke, Aston Villa. I'd say we could win a trophy. I think where Emery's at Villa, I think Villa fans all want to see us lift the trophy. And I think we've got an upward trajectory, and I think we're a good team, and I think we'll. Still be in the mix for top four and that, but I think if we can win something, uh, it'd be amazing. Amy, I'm expecting more positivity on Ipswich. I feel definitely really buoyed by what you guys have said. I <laughs> wondered if I was being a bit naive with how confident I am. Um, I think uh, mid-table and certainly the sort of bottom half, but the top end of that, and I think we're going to really surprise people. Whether we can keep that going, whether that 
impression that McKenna will give will mean that he goes on to bigger bigger pastures in the future I don't know but I'm hoping that we can prove that it's not just about money it's about the whole the way the whole club mm. is set up Flav is this Tottenham season again uh, I think Arsenal won't make top four fifth <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think Archie Gray will be named young player of the year okay good Newcastle I think we'll finish fifth Newcastle and qualify for the Champions League through the back door for the coefficiency. And I think Ipswich will stay up and will shock a lot of people at home. Jake Lester? Uh, I think Enzo Maresca will get sacked before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and I'll beat Liverpool. I'm going to have to be positive now, aren't I? Because I've been shouted at for being negative. I think we'll probably get to Wembley a few times in the trip. A few times? A few times. times, yeah. Go on, we'll do the cup double with Arnie, I'll say. OK, all right, we'll take that one. Scorsi, what was yours? Um, <laughs> so, someone take it. The two, two people have took mine. Um, Maresca gone by January. I've got another one, I and think. Ten Hag. No. <laughs> <Don't show up. laughs> and Ipswich to finish in the top 12. Wow. Ooh. Top 12. She's, she's taught me round. Yeah, yeah. The news yeah. as in there is brilliant, isn't it? What's mine? Ten Hag gone by November. <laughs> International break. We'll either win the league or vanish for our manager at Christmas. Yeah. <sighs> one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> I know which one it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks for joining us for the, uh, the fan debate brought to you by Skybet. Make sure you join us next week.